example of control. You parents out there trying to handle two kids in the Cocker Spaniel, take note. comes the moment we promised you a little bit earlier in the show. John Russell has just put on a pair of 32-foot stilts. Now, that's a foot longer than his old record-breaking pair. He's going to attempt to take 25 steps in these 32-foot stilts. If he makes it, there will be a brand new entry in the Guinness Book of World Records. Good luck to you, John. Everybody want to count the steps with me? Go whenever you're ready, we'll count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. A new world record. Okay, put me up. Up, put me up. Ah. What's next? This dog knows. Just follow this dog to three rings of doggone fun. In ring one, Miss Anna's wolfhounds. In ring two, Rona's dogs. And in ring three, the Eric Braun dogs. always looking for trouble. We've talked about a new generation of circus performers. Well, here's a member of that generation who grew up in the circus to become a featured star. And this right here is her father. This is Lou Jacobs. I believe Ringling Brothers, Barnum and Bailey's most famous clown and probably most beloved, too. Lou, I bet you're really proud of that little girl, aren't you? You're going to be watching her now? <laughs> I thought so. Now, here she is in an outstanding display of aerial grace and daring. Miss Dolly Jacobs.
Dolly Jacobs as she attempts for the first time in over four decades a seemingly impossible feat. The circus people say that this is probably the most dangerous trick in the whole show. It scared me in rehearsal and I know it's going to scare me again. of the inside of the globe of death. This is a picture of me inside the globe of death. And this is a picture of me leaving the inside of the globe of death to make as much room as possible for Victor Urias and Jose Medina.
I think I finally found my niche in the circus, just being your host here this evening. And if being right here in the middle of the greatest show on earth is an exciting experience for a young person like myself, you can imagine what it's like for the 40 boys and girls who are picked out of the audience at every show and get a chance to participate in this big, colorful, vintage circus parade. As you can see, I have had, and I'm still having a wonderful time, just bringing you the highlights of the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, the 111th edition. But there's so much more circus we couldn't show you because of lack of time, of course. The red unit that you just saw tonight opens at the Madison Square Garden in New York City on Wednesday, April the 1st, and the equally exciting blue unit will be crisscrossing the country all year. So be sure to enjoy all the action when the circus comes to your area. Night. Next, join Chevy Chase, Anne Margaret, Barbara Eden, Betty Davis, and more for the 30th anniversary of This Is Your Life. Tomorrow, the Munsters are back. It's the world premiere of The Munsters' Revenge. Then, Mount St. Helens erupts, the MGM Grand Hotel fire. See actual footage of monster disasters tomorrow. This is a new Center 39 update. Brought and you know she started smoking and drinking. Her goodness, come taste it. Flooding, lots of damage. We'll update the storm on News 8 at 11 o'clock. Dangerous, daring, death-defying, ladies and gentlemen. Phineas Taylor Barnum again. Would you like to know the real reason that I introduced the very first three-ring circus? You see, I figured that if you had two other acts going on at the same time, it would make each act work just a little bit harder. Now, that is what you have to understand about circus. Each act, each family, each performer is always trying to be a little more entertaining, a little more exciting, to get that little extra bit of applause to be the greatest. Let's take the flying trapeze, for example. For years, the big sensation was just one feller passing from the bar to another feller, the catcher, without falling. But pretty soon, somebody actually tried a somersault in midair before reaching the catcher. Well, after a few years, they were doing two somersaults. Now, I know that most people figure uh, that the first person to do a triple somersault was the great Ernie Clark. But I'm going to let you in on a little secret. By my recollection, the first human being to ever do a triple somersault in midair was a woman by the name of Lena Jordan. Of course, it was years before this feat could be performed with any regularity. But nowadays, why, you can go to any performance of the greatest show on earth, and by golly, you can see those young folks flying around doing the triple like they were born up there. Here, within a single family of trapeze artists, we present two triple somersaults performed simultaneously by the flying España. TV special featuring the blue unit of the greatest show on earth, a young trapeze artist named Miguel Vasquez attempted to become the first performer in history to complete the almost impossible quadruple somersaults. But circuses don't use trick photography or special effects, just live performers working before a live audience. And try as he did, Miguel could not accomplish the challenging feat during the broadcast. Here with me now is that young daredevil, Miguel. And Miguel, can you tell me what the feeling you had when you missed that year? Well, that was a, a very bad feeling for me because I was really hoping to accomplish the quadruple, especially for the TV special, and to show America what we can do, you know. But also, it doesn't end there. On July 10th, in Tucson, Arizona, while the audience held its breath, 
Miguel did what no circus performer had ever done before, a quadruple somersault in midair, spinning 70 miles an hour into the arms of his brother Juan. He has since that date completed the quadruple on many other occasions. Tell me what you felt like that day in Tucson. Okay, before the act, I was feeling very, very good, and I was really hoping to catch it that time, and I told my brother, you know, okay, we're going to do it this time because I'm feeling great. Just let's do the best we can and go for it now. Well, congratulations, Miguel. Thank you. I know much. how it feels to win the game. All right. Fabulous, fearless Bowers will attempt a double pole exchange in midair.
I thought you wanted to go. And I thought you wanted to go. Let's have some coffee and talk about it. Times like these <laughs> are made for Taster's Choice. When it's time for decaffeinated, Taster's Choice decaffeinated. A premium blend of coffee using only natural decaffeinators from the bean itself. The purest coffee flavor for your best coffee times. My mascara has to lengthen and thicken, separate and define, and make my eyes leap off the page. It has to last without smudging. It has to have a fiber-free formula with a brush that's curved to color every lash. It has to make my eyes look big and beautiful. CoverGirl's demanded it. All you do is ask for it. CoverGirl Professional Mascara. You students are giving me an education in indigestion. Got the perfect thing, new tempo and acid. Nothing's perfect. Well, then tempo's 99% perfect. Hmm, different, soft. Soft to dissolve fast and neutralize 99% of excess stomach acid. No antacid can top that. Tempo's not chalky or gritty. Amazing. See? Perfect. 99% perfect. For gas, heartburn, acid indigestion, new soft tempo, 99% perfect. And now, beauty of love, in the darkened dome, high above ring three, the Franconi duo. Above ring two, the lovely Lisa. And swinging on the side, over ring one, in their aerial debut, Stefan. T. Barnum here. I want to tell you a little about elephants. You know, for me, a circus is just not a circus without elephants. And just like Gunther Gable Williams, I made legends out of mine. You ever hear of Jumbo? Greatest elephant ever. 12 feet high, six and a half tons. Why, I had to construct a special wagon for him. Now, of course, all you folks think that Jumbo means big or huge. But that's because that's what I wanted you to think. Actually, Jumbo is just Swahili for, hello there. You know the expression, white elephant? That comes from my rare and speckled Burmese elephant, which was completely overlooked by the public when one of my competitors whitewashed one of his old bulls. The public flocked to see it, even though they knew that it was a fake. White elephant, my eye. Well, one of my favorite stories about an elephant by the name of Hebe. Now, I had heard that she'd given birth to the first baby elephant ever born in America. So I offered that circus owner $100,000 for the mother and the baby. And you know what he did? That sly old fox? Just to get in more business. He took out ads and put them up on every billboard in the East Coast that said, with a blazing headline, and I quote, What Barnum Thinks of the Baby Elephant. And then he proceeded to tell the whole world about my offer. 
Well, I figured anybody who thought he could outsmart old P.T. was somebody that I ought to get to know. So I went to see this fella. His name was James A. Bailey. Well, I guess you know what happened after that. We became partners. Barnum and Bailey. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We can tell you a lot of stories about elephants. Presenting the world famous Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Performing Elephants. Trained and presented by Gunther Gable Williams. And introducing 12-year-old Mark Oliver Gable. Gunther Gable Williams will be vaulted from a teeter board to the back of an elephant. <laughs> 